Thank you for joining Wars of the Roses. And this is Krauss, Carl Christian Friedrich from the Encyclopedia Freemasonry by Albert G. Mackey. Krauss, Carl Christian Friedrich, one of the most learned and laborious Masons of Germany, and one who received the smallest reward and the largest persecution for his learning and his labors. The record of his life reflects but little credit on his contemporaries who were high in office, but it would seem low in intellect. Findel calls them the antiquated German Masonic world. Dr. Krauss was born at Eisenberg, a small city of Altenburg, May 6, 1781. He was educated at Jena, where he enjoyed the instructions of Reinhold, Fichte, and Schelling. While making theology his chief study, he devoted his attention at the same time to philosophy and mathematics. In 1801, he obtained his degree as Doctor of Philosophy and established himself at the University of Jena as an extraordinary professor. There he remained until 1805, marrying in the meantime a lady of the name of Fuchs, with whom he passed 30 years, leaving as the fruit of his union eight sons and five daughters. In 1805, Krauss removed to Dresden and remained there until 1813. In April 1805, he was initiated into Freemasonry in the Lodge Archimedes. As soon as he had been initiated, he commenced the study of the institution by the reading of every Masonic work that was accessible. It was at this time that Krauss adopted his peculiar system of philosophy, which was founded on the theory that the collective life of man, that is to say of humanity, was an organic and harmonious unity. And he conceived the scheme of a formal union of the whole race of mankind into one confederacy, embracing all partial unions of church organizations, of state government, and of private social aggregations into one general confederation, which should labor, irrespective of political, ecclesiastical, or personal influences, for the universal and uniform culture of mankind. Of such a confederation, he supposed that he could see the germ in the order of Freemasonry, which therefore it was his object to elevate to that position. He first submitted these views in a series of lectures delivered before the lodge Zu den Dre Schwertern in Dresden, of which he had been appointed the orator. They were received with much approbation and were published in 1811 under the title of the Spiritualization of the Genuine Symbols of Freemasonry. In these lectures, Krauss has not confined himself to the received rituals and accustomed interpretations, but has adopted a system of his own this is the course that was pursued by him in his greater work, the Kunsturkunden. And it was this which partly gave so much offense to his Masonic, but not his intellectual superiors. In 1810, he published, as the result of all his labors and researches, his greatest work, the one on which his reputation principally depends, and which notwithstanding its errors is perhaps one of the most learned works that ever issued from the Masonic press. This is Diedre Diltesten Kunsturkunden Der Freimaurer Briederzehaft, or the three oldest professional documents of the Brotherhood of Freemasons. The announcement that this work was shortly to appear produced the greatest excitement in the Masonic circles of Germany. The progressive members of the craft looked with anxious expectation for the new discoveries which must result from the investigations of an enlightened mind. The antiquated and unprogressive Masons, who were opposed to all discussion of what they deemed esoteric subjects, dreaded the effects of such a work on the exclusiveness of the order. Hence, attempts were made by these latter to suppress the publication. So far were these efforts carried that one of the German Grand Lodges offered the author a large amount of money for his book, which proposal was, of course, rejected. After the publication, the Grand Master of the three Grand Lodges sought every means of excommunicating Krauss and Mosdorf, who had sustained him in his views. After much angry discussion, the Dresden Lodge, Zudendre Schwertern, was prevailed upon to act as executioner of this ignorant spirit of fanaticism, and Krauss and Mosdorf, two of the greatest lights that ever burst upon the horizon of Masonic literature, were excommunicated, nor did the persecution here cease. Krauss experienced its effects through all the remaining years of his life. He was prevented on frequent occasions by the machinations of his Masonic enemies from advancement in his literary and professional pursuits and failed through their influence to obtain professorships to which, from his learning and services, he was justly entitled. Findel, page 629, 
has approvingly quoted Dr. Schauberg as calling this the darkest page in the history of German Freemasonry. In 1814, Krauss removed to Berlin. In 1821, he traveled through Germany, Italy, and France, and in 1823, established himself at Göttingen, where he gave lectures on philosophy until 1830. He then removed to Munich, where he died September 27, 1832. Besides his contributions to Freemasonry, Krauss was an extensive writer on philosophical subjects. His most important works are his Lectures on the System of Philosophy, 1828, and his Lectures on the Fundamental Truths of Science, 1829, both published at Göttingen. His great work, however, to which he owes his Masonic fame, is his Kunstkunden. He commences this work by a declaration of his design in writing it, which was twofold. First, to enlighten the Brotherhood in reference to the three oldest documents in possession of the craft, by a philological and philosophical examination of these records, and secondly, and with a higher purpose, to call their attention to a clear perception of the fundamental idea of a general union of mankind, to be accomplished by a reorganization of their own brotherhood. To the rituals of the present day, he objected as wanting in scientific formula, and he thought that out of these old records, they might well construct a better and more practical system. But with all his learning, while his ideas of reform, if properly carried out, would undoubtedly advance and elevate the Masonic institution, he committed grave errors in his estimation of the documents that he has made the groundwork of his system. The three documents which he has presented as the oldest and most authentic records of the fraternity are, one, the well-known Leland manuscript, a document of whose authenticity there are the gravest doubts, two, the Entered Apprentice's Lecture, a document published early in the 18th century, to which in his second edition he has added what he calls the New English Lecture. But it is now known that Krauss's lecture is by no means the oldest catechism extant. And three, the York Constitution, which, claiming the date of 926, has been recently suspected to be not older than the early part of the 18th century. Notwithstanding these assumptions of authenticity for documents not really authentic, the vast learning of the author is worthy of all admiration. His pages are filled with important facts and suggestive thoughts that cannot fail to exert an influence on all Masonic investigations. Krauss cannot but be considered as one of the founders of a new Masonic literature, not for Germany alone, but for the whole world of Masonic students. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to share, like, subscribe and comment and if you can, please consider donating to Wars of the Roses links to PayPal and Patreon are in the description. Thank you so very much.